I got some messages last night from people asking to explain how the data recovery works at a bit level. So here's your lesson in Boolean algebra and how Boolean algebra is used at the heart of data recovery within a RAID system. Um, so every file on a computer is just a sequence of zeros and ones. So let's pretend we have a file with two bits, uh, bits A and B. So again, it, each value of the bit can be zero or one. So there are four possible combinations of this file. You can have uh, A is zero and B is zero. You can have uh, A is zero, B is one. You can have A is one, B is zero. And the other possibility is both bits are one. Um, in computer science, zero is technically, is considered false. One is considered true. So I might say zero, one, or false and true interchangeably. So um, there are a couple, of, there, are, there are a bunch of ways you can combine, combine bits. Uh, we're going to look at three typical uh, Boolean operators. There's the or operator, there's the and operator, and then there's the exclusive or. And we'll go through that, and I will show you why, uh, at a basic level, uh, exclusive or can be used for recovering data in a RAID configuration. So uh, the definition of or, and usually that's written by uh, the plus sign, so A plus B. Um, and what we're doing here, this is called a Boolean truth table. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to enumerate the different values of A plus B, A or B, depending on the values of A, of a and B. Uh, so the definition of or is um, if either bit is one, then the value of A or B is one. So you can think about it is you can think another way you can you can think about it is if A or B is true, then the statement A or B is also true. So in this first case, if both A and B are zero, then A or B is also zero because neither bit is one. Uh, in the next case, and actually in the remaining cases, A or B is one because in this first case, uh, the value of the B bit is one. So the value of A or B is one. Similarly, we get a one for uh, the next case and the third case as well. Because in the third case, both A and B are one, so A or B is also one. So that's or. Um, the other operator, or another operator, is and. And what and says is, if both A and B are true, then the value of A and B is true. So you can think about it as like a logical statement. If both statements are true, then the combination of them is true. So um, typically you can write that as just A, 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 B. So in the first case, zero and zero is zero. Uh, zero and one is zero because only one of them is true. And in order for and to be true, both statements need to be, or both bits need to be uh, one. So uh, the next case is zero. The third case is zero. And in the final case, since both A and B are one, then the value of A and B is also one. So that's what AND is. Um, another operator that you'll see a lot is exclusive OR. And again, this is the heart of how the data recovery works in this RAID system. So uh, that's what's running in the background right now, is this essentially high level. It's running this exclusive OR operator across the data. So you, you'll see exclusive OR written as A with a plus circle B. Exclusive OR is true if at most and actually, no, if, it's, if, if one and only one of the bits is true. So if both bits are true, then exclusive or is false. So only one of the bits can be true in order for the statement to be true itself. So in this case, uh, zero exclusive or zero is zero because neither one of them are true. In the next two cases, the value of exclusive or is one because, again, at most one of the bits is true. In the first case, B is true. A is false. In the second case, A is true, B is false. In the final case, where both bits A and B are one, the value of exclusive or is zero because, again, at most one of the bits can be true in order for the statement to be true. So we have a value of zero here. So the question is, and this is what happens in, in this data recovery within a RAID system. So um, what RAID does is it splits the data across multiple drives. So again, in this example where we have a file with two bits, uh, that file isn't 
all isn't completely written on one drive. The data is is split across multiple drives. So bit the first bit could be written on uh, the first drive, and the second bit could be written on uh, a different drive. Um, that's called striping. So you're striping the data across multiple drives. So let's say let's say we actually lose. Uh, we, we lose the value of B. We don't know there was, a, there was a file corruption, a hard drive failure. We actually lost, uh, we lost the value of this B column here. So we don't know the value of this bit anymore. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at each of these three uh, operators and see can we use this operator as like a sanity, sanity check to reverse engineer what that value of B was that was lost. So let's consider the first example of A or B. So we're just looking at this column. So <clears throat> if we know that A or B is zero, and we know that A is also zero, in order for that statement to be zero, then the value of B must be zero. Again, because A or if A or B is zero, then the value of A or B is also zero. So we know for a fact that uh, in this case, uh, B is zero. In the next case, where um, we know the value of A or B is one, and we know the value of A is zero, the only way to make that statement true, A or B, it means B must be true. So we can recover that one there. In the next case, again, if we know that A or B is true, and we know that A is true, well, we're kind of in a, we're kind of we're kind of kind of a problem here because B could be both zero or one because in both situations, in both situations, the value A or B would resolve to one because again, it doesn't matter. Uh, we already know that A is one and that makes the value of A or B one itself. So we actually can't tell whether or not uh, the value of B is zero or one. So in this example, or is not a good way of recovering the missing data. Uh, again, we have the same issue in, in the final case. Um, it's the same, same thing. So, uh, or will not allow us to recover that missing bit. So let's, uh, let's see what happens if we switch over to A and B. So again, the only by definition, A and B is one if both bits are one. So <clears throat> let's let's look at this. In, in this first, first instance where we know that A and B is zero and we know that A is zero, well, we, got, we also don't know whether or not B is zero or one because for both values, zero and one, this statement here will resolve to zero. A and B will, be, will, will resolve to zero. So right off the bat, we know that and is not a good way of recovering the data because, again, even if we know that A is zero, um, it doesn't matter whether or not B is zero or one because that statement will already be false. So we're, 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 we're kind of screwed there. Um, so you can work out the rest. It's obvious that um, and will not allow us to resolve that missing data. So what happens if we go down to exclusive or? So again, exclusive or is only true if one and only one of the bits is true. So let's look at this. Like that. All right. So in this first case, if we know that A exclusive or B is zero, and we know that A is zero, that means that the only, the only, by definition, B has to be zero. Because again, if B was one, then we would know, we would, if B was one, then the value of A exclusive or B would be one. So we know that A exclusive or B is zero, so therefore, and, and A is zero, therefore B is also zero. Uh, in the next case, this is exactly what I just described. If we know that the exclusive or between A and B is one, and we know that A is zero, then by definition, B must be one, because it's the only situation where a, z a zero A bit could resolve to one is if the B bit was one. In the, uh, in the next case, it's the, it's, it's the flip. So we know that A exclusive or B is one. We know that A is one. 
So therefore, by definition, b must be 0. In the final case, if we know that the value of the exclusive or is 0, and we know that the value of a is 1, by definition, b must be uh, 1. Because if b was 0, then that a exclusive or would resolve, a exclusive or b would resolve to 1. But it resolves to 0, so therefore we know that um, b must be 1. So in this case, we're actually able to recover the missing data using exclusive or. Essentially, that's more or less what's happening in a RAID system, is your data is, is split across multiple drives, but you're also using some of your disk space to store this um, this pair, it's called, it's called bit parity. So it's a, kind of like a sanity check. So you're, you're using some of your, your storage space to, to actually uh, account for the value of this operation. So that in the event that a drive dies, so again, in this case where we lost, um, we lost this entire B drive, this B column, we can take the parity bit and we can reverse engineer uh, what data was on that missing drive. So again, I lost two of these drives last night. Uh, right now I'm doing the resilvering. And again, the resilvering is going bit by bit across all of the surviving drives. There's, there's 14 drives in that array. Um, so 12 of them are running, I pop two in. So the 12 drives are working together to figure out, okay, my value for this bit is this, my value for this bit is this, the parity bit says this, so therefore they can, they can do the uh, algebraic operation to recover the missing data on the dead drive. Uh, so that's what's happening there. So that's why, like, in a lot of RAID systems, so again, I'm running uh, 14 of these four terabyte drives, so you would expect there to be 56 terabytes of storage space. Uh, that's not the case. Uh, it's closer to 40 terabytes because, uh, like I said, the RAID system has to use um, some of that storage space to, 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 to maintain all this data. Whoops. It needs to maintain the value of this parity bit. So you're, you are losing, when you're running RAID, you are losing some of your storage space but you are getting, uh, you are getting the, the ability to recover data uh, that's lost if part of your rate fails. So that's high level how it works. Um, it's probably a little bit more complicated in practice, but really it boils down to um, using something like exclusive or um, at a bit level to figure out what the data was if a drive fails and you are not able to read what that bit is, because the surviving drives, the surviving drives are able to pool their data together, and essentially solve the algebraic equation to figure out what that value should be. So there you go. There's your fucking tech talk.